Hello, welcome back. My name is Danielle, owner of Spore Yourself Natural Soap. Today is Monday, so I need to get started um, doing a couple errands before I start my day. So I will be going to post office, UPS, uh, I have some Amazon returns to run to the grocery store bunch of errands. I have an appointment at noon today and then I need to come back, inventory my product, and we can talk about farmers markets after. Um, or markets in general. I shouldn't say just farmers markets. Markets in general. See what everyone's thoughts are. If you're doing them, if you like them, uh, if you think they are worth it for you, and if uh, it's the right or if you found your right niche at the markets themselves. Right here, you're gonna see me starting to put away some inventory. I had done an event the on Sunday, so the day prior, and I'm just taking everything out that didn't sell, putting it away, and then I will be inventorying it. The event was held at a local crystal shop that was celebrating their one year anniversary. There were four other vendors, including myself, and I thought it was a really great opportunity as her customers and my customers overlap. So it was my ideal clientele and I did really, really well. I was very happy with the outcome. Ideally, when I am booking a show or a market, my expectation is at least 10 times my vendor fee. So if I paid $50 for an event, I would expect to make $500 if I'm in the correct niche. So if I've hit my target market, I should always be making 10 times my vendor fee as a minimum. And here I am at the market, hello. Putting together a quick local order, I allow my customers to pick up at my house. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my business in general, how I got started. I wanted to talk about markets a little bit and my thoughts on them um, for my particular customer. Um, I really kind of go from there. So my name is Danielle. My business name is Boy Yourself Natural. I have been in business since October of 2016 and it started more or less as a hobby. It kind of just fell into my lap. So um, back in 2014, I started utilizing essential oils. It was all the rave at the time. Um, I had a lot of friends and family that were interested in it. I decided to start doing some education classes for essential oils, healthy living, and uh, I started doing a lot of make and takes. So I would have friends and family come over to my home. Um, I would teach them, you know, essential oil safety, and then we would make some products. And then it started to become a hobby of mine. I really enjoyed making products. I um, started researching a lot, figured out how to make cold process soap, and I was sold. I was like, this is amazing. I love it. How can I do this all the time? So I opened up an Etsy shop. I started selling to friends and family. Um, and it was really just a hobby though. You know, I did register my business, did everything the right way. But as long as I was making enough money to support my hobby, I was happy, you know, so I'd get a couple orders on Etsy. When the money came through, I'd buy more supplies type of thing. So that worked out for probably five years. I really enjoyed it just as a hobby. I worked uh, full time. I do have a family. I have two children and a husband. So it worked out great. I had a hobby that I didn't have to financially support, essentially. Um, I've always wanted to do this full time, but I always had a reason not to. And it was always... You know, I have to wait till I make, make X amount of dollars. I need to wait until my kids are older. Um, you know, I'd want to prioritize my family as opposed to something that I enjoyed. Um, I was the insurance holder for ever. So I said, you know, when I can financially cover 
health insurance for everybody. So there was always a reason why um, I couldn't do this full time or I really couldn't pursue it the way I wanted to. So the year before I left my business, it was probably on like year five, I'm like, I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna really work hard this year and see how much money I can make, really take it seriously and see if I can make this a business. And I did really good. I had started doing a uh, farmer's market in my town, uh, first year it had ever gone. Um, and I was lucky enough to get in. It's been running three years now, so I'm like the local salt maker there. There's still other people that go, but not, you know, don't have a full season. So um, I was really impressed with the amount of local support that I was getting because I was actually, you know, pushing my brand, my product. I was a lot more confident in it than just being it being a hobby. Um, and then COVID hit. So when COVID hit, um, I think everybody experienced just how they were living, you know, at least for, for me, I didn't like the way I was living. I did have a nice work home balance, but running a business along with that and family, it was still too much. Um, I had worked from home, so I was still working, but working from home while my children were schooling from home and it just, I didn't feel fulfilled anymore. I didn't, I just felt like I was repeating the same thing over and over again. So I was speaking to my husband and he said, why don't you just try it? Just jump in and see, give yourself a year and see if it can work. And I had every excuse in the book. I'm like, what about health insurance? What about this? So um, I actually found health insurance that was reasonably priced. Uh, the end of 2021, I put my notice in the first week of December. I left there the last week of December and I started 2022 as a full-time small business. So it was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I had so much self-doubt. Um, I hadn't really run the business as a business. So there was so much to sort through. Um, I had to buy an inventory program, figure out how to set up, you know, like a little studio. It was just a lot of like back end work. Um, and then I realized like I have to make X amount of dollars to, you know, pay the bills. So I ended up doing the local market in my town, the one next to us, which is the largest farmer's market in Massachusetts. And I had been applying for four or five years for this market. Like every year I'm shut down, um, which I understand, you know, you gotta, they, you know, they only allow so many at a time. And I do appreciate that. And last year they allowed me in for half a season. So I was just like over the moon and I took markets a lot more seriously. So the two markets that I did consistently throughout the, the year last year kept me afloat for all of summer. Um, summer is a slower time for me. I definitely get orders, but not super consistently. Um, and that like brought me through the whole summer into September. And then the normal holiday rush started to come. So I was able to take care of all my bills and everything for last year really proud of myself. I thought I was going to have to get a part-time job, which was totally okay. Um, but I made it through. And so toward the end of last year, I'm like, okay, you did one year, you're doing great, but you need to step it up. You need to be able to pay a little bit more in bills or get your name out there, really push hard. You know what you're capable of. Um, so the beginning of this year in January, January, February is when most of the markets for the season, farmers markets, um, start to open up. So I reapplied for my town, the surrounding town that I did really well at last year, as well as like every market that I knew would be good. Um, you know, that worked for me. Like I really niche down if it's, if I don't have my ideal customer there, there's no sense in doing it. I've done markets that are kind of a bust. Um, so I really know where my client is and it's typically like an artisan market or a farmer's market I do very well at both of those regular shows that other hosts put on it's like a, a 50 50 so I really focused on that and two markets that I had applied to the previous year that I was declined I got in again so I 
essentially over scheduled myself by accident. I figured a couple of them would actually decline because I'd been declined a couple times. Um, and I got into them all. So I am completely booked out until November of 2023 and I'm over the moon. I know a lot of people don't like to do summer shows or summer markets. It's what's pushing my business for the time and I plan on doing them for this year and potentially next year. I think there's nothing wrong with um, really just like pushing through. I hope to in the next couple years um, not have to do it because it is a lot of work when you're doing a couple markets a week uh, in 100 degree weather in New England. You never know what to expect, but it's really it's what's kept my business afloat and the amount of loyal customers I've gotten from these markets, 100% worth it for me. I mean, just those customers alone make it worth it for me. Um, but I did just really want to talk about markets themselves. I know some makers need them. They absolutely talk them up and tell you how amazing they are. And then you have other makers that say like, not worth my time. Don't do it in the summer. I only do four markets a year. And I just wanted to give you my personal experience as someone who's been in the business for a long time, but just started really working the business within the last year and a half. Um, if you are newer, I suggest trying it. If you have a seasoned small business and you're looking for a little bit more clientele or not even that, if you are looking for like your niche customer and you haven't found it, I really suggest trying a market out, a farmer's market, um, you know, like your local holiday bazaars, that type of thing. Um, I sell all natural bath and body. So I don't use fragrance oils. I don't use micas. Um, so I have a very niche line on what people want. So when people go to farmer's markets, they're there because they typically want to buy healthier food. They're a lot more health conscious. Um, and a lot of them I have noticed tend to, because there are other soap makers there, tend to come toward me because I do offer essential oils or unscented. And then everything that's colored with my product is colored with a clay or an herb. So um, when I do farmer's markets, it's my niche customer. So I do very well. So I just wanted to really talk about it a little bit more, see what your thoughts were. If you had any questions, um, that's about it. So thank you so much. Till next time. Bye.